Hey guys, welcome into the channel. Today's video, we are going back to the basics. Only in NHL 21, I want to kind of get back to my roots on what this channel was built on, and that was helping you guys get a little bit better at NHL. So for NHL 21, we are going to start all of the tip videos with the very basics, with a video that essentially started back in NHL 04 with Mark Crawford explaining how overload, crash the net, and behind the net actually work. Especially with teams that have a lot of skilled forwards. And the premise is that we've got support for the puck carrier, giving him two options. Now, stunningly enough, those are still the same three offensive strategies that we have in the game today. And I'm going to break them down and show you guys exactly how to use them. Why is this important? Because I feel like the mass amount of people that struggle at this game really just don't have a plan of attack. Once you actually have a plan, no matter who you're playing, you will have an advantage over players that are near your skill level, especially if you're outside of Division 1. So guys, today's video is going to be all about that, explaining the offensive strategies in NHL 21 and showing you guys how to use them correctly. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so we are not going to be talking about the team-based strategies, this one right here in this video. I will have an in-depth video that covers all of this. Be sure to subscribe to my channel with notifications on. That way you don't miss it when I do release it. It's going to explain when all when to use all of these strategies. It's going to be really helpful, I promise you that. So we are going to be talking about the offensive line strategies and specifically overload, crash the net, and behind the net. I feel like far too often players don't really use these strategies at all. They just either pick one, play how they play. They chase chase the puck, they look for short side wristers or maybe a one-timer, but they really have no idea what their AI is doing. And if you can learn where your AI is going with all three of these strategies, then you can become a lot better player just by having a plan. It's going to increase your time on attack, which is going to mean you play less defense, just going to help you overall. So let's start off with the overload strategy. All right, so here is the formation of the overload. It is three players on the boards, either left or right side. It does not matter. And basically, it is trying to open up that slot side winger for a one-timer. It also gives you a free defenseman at the bottom left here in this example. And it's going to create a lot of offense. I think that the one thing that people forget and why the overload is kind of you know, becoming extinct in competitive NHL is because a lot of people are adapting the collapsing and protect net strategy. They are bringing all of their players out into that middle slot area. And because the overload is a very perimeter-based offensive strategy, if that one player in the slot is covered, that's why it's not really as effective anymore. But one thing that people overlook using the overload strategy is that defender. And not because it is open for a one-timer more often than not. As D to D one-timers are a viable way to score, but they're nowhere near the most effective. You basically are almost always giving up an opportunity to possess the puck, losing time on attack, and now you're defending. Which is why D to D one-timers aren't really the way to go. They're kind of a last resort if that is what your opponent is giving you. But in this instance, I'm going to show you how to actually use the the defenseman to open up a lot more in the overload strategy. All right, so here is the first example. Nine times out of ten, the mediocre player in NHL is going to hit that far side defenseman for a one-timer. But notice how there's two guys already in the slot that could potentially block it, as well as the fact that early on in Hut specifically, defensemen have such low overalls in shooting that he's probably not going to defeat a, even a base goaltender early on. You have a much better chance at scoring at taking all of the space that your AI from your opponent is giving you. If he's not playing tight point and he's playing collapsing protect net, you're going to have all of this room to play with, and you can walk right in and do a lot of things. In this instance, we just bury with Hedman. Here's another example of using the defenseman to your advantage using the overload other than just firing a blind one-timer. So I'm getting pressured here down low. I have nowhere to go. All of the passing lanes to the slot are clogged. And at the point, there's also a defender there kind of right up in my grill. So I can't just streak in towards the slot like I did in the last clip. However, that far side defender is open. Instead of just taking a one-timer with no screen, I walk in a little bit and wait for my centerman to actually get into position to be able to tip the shot on goal. I also want to be clear, guys. The overload isn't all about just using your defenseman for offense. It's really not it at all. I just need to show you guys an alternative to what a lot of people do while using the overload strategy, and that's just trying to hit that far side defender for a one-timer. You have way more options if you actually collect the puck 
and carry it in. A lot of players struggle with holding on to the puck in the offensive zone. They get nervous with it when they get pressured. They think they're just going to turn it over. You need to take the space that's available to you. And when everyone is using collapsing protect net, that guy in the slot is going to be covered a ton of the time. That is why I'm showing you guys what to do with the point, because that is what's going to be open when using the overload strategy. All right, on to the next offensive tip for the overload, and that is scoring with the short side wrister from the board side winger. So basically, the objective is to get the puck down low into the corner boards that's where you're going to set everything up you have all three players along the boards for support and then you're looking for that one timer in the slot now what happens is if players are playing a little bit tighter on you so they're not collapsing into the slot that is where you're going to want to hold on to the puck and go for the short side wrister because you're going to have more room all you've got to do is beat that one maybe two guys by holding off the puck and in this case with Stamkos it's a no-brainer to walk right into the slot and rip it upstairs now, this next play is probably the bread and butter of using the overload nowadays. Again, with the collapsing protect net strategies that pretty much everyone uses in online play, it's really limited your ability to hit that guy in the slot for the one-timer. It requires a lot more patience. This is another perfect example of how to set up offense from your defenseman by taking the space that's available to you. Again, this is the play that you're going to want to look for the most when using the overload. So in this instance, you have no one-timer ability here. You're on your strong side with Shattenkirk. You're bringing it into the slot. All you're trying to do is get your focus onto Shattenkirk. You know that you're not going to shoot a short side wrister because you can't. But what is going to happen is if your opponent locks in on that defender with the puck, which a lot of players do, especially outside of Division One rivals, what they are going to do is key in on the puck. And that is what you are waiting for because what will happen is... The back door is going to be wide open. All right, so I've shown you guys all the ways to kind of go about the overload if someone's using the collapse and protect meta. So what happens if someone isn't and you can actually use the strategy as intended? So what you want to do in this case, always remember that if you set your shot before you actually pass, you are going to freeze the goaltender. If you did not see my video where Ben Ross, the EA gameplay developer, broke down Josh Fearless's gameplay, a top streamer and competitor in the entire world in NHL, you should go back and watch that. But in that video, he explains that if you set your shot, so hold the forehand strong before you shoot or pass, it will freeze the goaltender because the goaltender will realize that the, sh the threat of the shot is more important than the pass. In this instance, it sets up really nicely for the overload because that is what you're looking for, that backdoor one-timer. All right, guys, on to the next offensive strategy, really the most popular and common one in NHL 20 and more than likely going to be the common one going into NHL 21 as well. It is the behind-the-net strategy. And the reason why it became so popular was because, well, the overload when everyone went from collapsing protect net really was closed off. Behind the net forces your opponent to start playing some defense, to start putting pressure on you. It's really about controlling play cycling the puck increasing your time on attack the more time on attack you have the less time you have to spend actually defending so let's walk through all of the ways to look for and score with the behind the net strategy so a lot like the overload it is all about getting down low into the boards but with the behind the net strategy what you want to do is cycle around the net whether that be passing to the winger that's going to be on the other side of the net or carrying it around yourself. The best way and most effective way to score behind the net is to carry the puck down low around the net and wait for that far side player to get open. Now, more often than not, that's going to be covered quite a bit, but this is the initial play that you want to look for when cycling the puck with the behind the net strategy. So in this clip right here is a perfect example of why the behind the net strategy became so popular in NHL 20. Everyone went with the biggest build possible. Everyone was using collapsing protect net. And the reason why big players were so at an advantage in NHL 20 is because you couldn't bump them off the puck. So you could just hold it the forehand backhand deke and cycle around with the behind the net strategy. It's going to keep requiring your opponent to move and chase you around and eventually something opens up. So in this sequence here, again, you're going to see I just cycle the puck around and the more time on attack you have, the less time you have to spend defending. So I want to break down this clip as it is the most popular way to score behind the net and essentially the most important. So what you want to do in this scenario, again, the goal is to get it to that far side winger for an easy tap-in goal on the back door. 
But what you want to do is make sure that your eyes are always locked on that far side winger. What you want to be doing is making sure that you're not just locking in on the player with the puck because he's really not going to do much for you with the behind the net strategy. What you want to make sure you do is you hold out the forehand or backhand depending on which way you are defending from the defender. So the puck is always as far away as possible from the nearest defender. And then make sure your eyes are locked on the other side winger so that you can fire the pass at the right moment. All right, so this next setup with behind the net actually happens way out at the point. And all you're trying to do is wait for the two wingers. So if you've got opposite-handed players, which you always should, left-handed players play on the right wing, right-handed wingers play on the left wing, the reason for that is to set up the one-timer at pretty much any angle. So in this situation with behind the net, because it is really with three players rotating around the net, it'll give you almost this triangle with both wingers in a position to hammer a one-timer. So in this, what you can do is get into the slot, and then whatever player your opponent kind of lets off of, that's the one you pass to. And in this situation, I hit the right winger right here, and he hammers home a one-timer. Another great tactic with behind the net is the give and go. So while your players are rotating, the two players on the strong side, the side with the puck, are going to be in a spot to hit a one-timer, and you can do it relatively quickly. In this sequence right here, I'm going to show you, I hit the streaking player into the middle. I fire right back to the guy that just passed me, and it's wide open for the one-timer. The goalie has no chance on this. You're going to see this a lot in the top-end competitive play as they look for these kind of backdoor one-timers that are very, very quick to set up. Now, this next goal is probably one of my most favorite when using the behind-the-net strategy, and it happens off of the rush. What ends up happening is, again, the give and go with the player that you're passing the puck to always sits wide open for a one-timer more often than not unless your opponent is playing for it. So in this example right here, I stop up off the rush, hit my defenseman far side, and then I just fire it right back to him. And the goaltender really doesn't have much of a chance, especially if you have a decent shooter firing the one-timer. Alright guys, so this last clip is going to hammer home the point of this entire video, and that's to help you guys understand the offensive strategies of the AI on your team so that you don't have to watch the puck carrier as much. The reason why you guys struggle to find plays and one-timers and you turn it over and you get kind of hemmed out in the defensive zone is because you're just staring at the guy with the puck. The best way to do that is to make sure that you're comfortable and you know where your AI is going to be. So in plays like this, when you walk in with the defenseman, I'm not even looking at the net here at all. I have no interest in it. I'm just going to wait for that play to open up. And again, with the behind the net, those wingers are going to be open for the one-timer when you walk into the slot. All right, guys, and lastly, it is time to discuss crash the net. Now, this strategy, I would not recommend for anyone to just rely on the crash net strategy. The reason for it is it just offers up too much randomness, is you're really just looking to take shots on net and looking for a rebound or someone sitting in near the net, near the crease. Now, there is a time for it, in my opinion. If you are going up against a player that is hammering you in time on attack, meaning that you can't get sustained offensive pressure because he is playing defense perfectly against you and all you're able to do and all of your shots are coming from off the rush, then you need to switch to crash the net. And the reason for it is because the far side winger off the rush will literally just sprint towards the net and you can do a lot with that. So again, I would recommend this strategy for anyone that is really struggling against opponent in terms of actually controlling the play thing to remember about crash the net is that you want to actually aim your shots it's super important that if you're trying to score off the rush and you are using the crash the net strategy to fire low off the pads it was nerfed a little bit in nhl 20 with goalies starting to actually fire the puck into the corner but it does work from time to time and again with crash the net you're kind of just looking for that rebound chance and again there's lots of other ways to score the whole idea of the strategy is to try and get as many forwards up near the net to box out the defenders and if you circle around the net enough you're gonna have enough guys in tight you just gotta start hammering up on the sticks so I hope this video, guys, helps you understand the offensive strategy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment section down below. Be sure to get to it as quick as I possibly can. Now, obviously, this video was for the beginners. Obviously, the mediocre players, the guys struggling to win consistently. I will have more in-depth videos and tips and tricks as well as hut recommendations later on. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss out on any NHL 21 content. It is daily. And please, if you guys are around... Check out my Twitch channel. I stream Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on the weekends, it's Hot Champs. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.